Hello, today we're exploring The Garden of Love by William Blake. Before we start, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I have the poem here, so let's start. I went to the Garden of Love and saw what I never had seen. A chapel was built in the midst where I used to play on the green. And the gates of this chapel were shut, and thou shalt not writ over the door. So I turned to the garden of love, that so many sweet flowers bore. And I saw it was filled with graves, and tombstones where flowers should be. And priests in black gowns were walking their rounds, and binding with briars my joys and desires. Like many great poems, and particularly poems by William Blake, this is capable of various interpretations, so we'll explore them in this video. In the poem, the speaker goes into the garden of love and finds a chapel built on the spot where he used to play as a child. The gates of the chapel are shut and on the door are written many commandments, preaching conformity and telling people what they should not do. The garden has become a graveyard where once grew flowers, there now stand tombstones. The garden represents a lost land of freedom and happiness. The chapel, a world of laws and restriction. The speaker mourns the knowledge that the happy times he experienced as a child will never return. Like Blake's other poem, The Poison Tree, gardens have a religious significance reminding us of the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis in the Bible. This garden, the first biblical garden, the Garden of Eden, and the paradise which Adam and Eve lost when they succumbed to temptation and tasted the forbidden fruit. So in this respect, the poem has strong religious undertones. In this respect, the garden in the poem is about sexual freedom and love and the institutions that seek to restrict natural urges, desires and emotions. In Blake's time, the church and the morality it preached was often hypocritical. And a fine example of this is Andrew Marvell's To His Coy Mistress, which is a poem of temptation and seduction. Uh, written by a reverend, a church minister. By contrast, the Garden of Love is a place of sexual freedom where people follow the laws of nature and it also is a place of lost innocence. The green, the physical place, and also the colour symbolises nature and is juxtapositioned compared to the chapel to emphasise the conflict between the laws of nature and the laws of man, or man's interpretation of the teaching of Jesus and God. Interestingly, the poem also suggests or demonstrates the speakers, perhaps also the poets, inner conflict. For example, the poem suggests that the chapel has always been there, even in the speaker's childhood, and it is only now that he notices it. And this idea is contained in the first stanza. I went to the garden of love and saw what I never had seen. A chapel was built in the midst where I used to play on the green. This suggests that the laws are in some way good, but their interpretation by the priests 
represented as dark and menacing figures patrolling the perimeter undermine the potential to do good. In the poem, the church discriminates and excludes free thinkers like the poet. It also demonstrates the passing from a state of innocence, the child playing on the green, to a state of knowledge, recognising the chapel and its rules. And this rite of passage of growing up saddens the speaker. In the poem, the chapel is represented as unwelcoming. It is a place of restrictions. The phrase thou shalt not is included in a stanza. The chapel will not permit the speaker entry, highly likely because of his views and the lifestyle he leads. Not to be perturbed, the speaker returns to the garden of love and describes his memory of the sweetly perfumed flowers. However, this was in the past. He finds that the flowers and the garden has been replaced by a graveyard and tombstones representing the death of his youth. The graves have replaced the sweet flowers of his childhood. And the rules are enforced by priests dressed in black. So we see the garden, the chapel, the flowers and the graves and tombstones as symbolic and representing themes that the poet is exploring. The poem is replete with symbolism. So on your third, fourth reading, look out and check the symbolism that the poet uh, William Blake is using and ask yourselves the purpose for their inclusion. We are told that these restrictive rules are enforced by priests. They are dressed in black, representing negativity, representing perhaps evil and darkness. They walk their rounds and they are restricting the speaker's joys and desires, replacing them with punishments and pain. These punishments and the pain of the punishments is symbolised by the briars. The word binding suggests the speaker is made a prisoner and slave of such laws. And binding also suggests something overgrown, clogging all freedom to play in the garden. William Blake was a giant of the artistic world of the 18th century, a painter and poet. He cast an individual view on the injustice and hypocrisy of the society in which he lived. Although spiritual, he did not believe in organised religion and saw it as a tool to restrict freedom and deprive people of their natural joys and desires. We see this in the dark clad priests of the poem who patrol the garden, administering punishment for any breach of their commandments. The use of the first person voice, I, suggests that in this poem, the speaker and the poet are one and the same. And the poet is speaking from personal experience. Through antithesis, the use of opposites, the poet presents a world of freedom versus a world of laws, rules and restriction. Another theme is the loss of childhood innocence replaced by laws and rules of social control. The speaker can no longer play on the green of his childhood. All innocence has gone. The poem employs a simple vocabulary, Lexis, to make the message clearly understood 
to the broadest range of readers. The poem's simple structure, written in quatrains, four lines, and its simple rhyming scheme, AB, CB, and its departure in the final two lines of the final stanza, where internal rhyme, gowns and rounds and briars and desires, give it a lyrical sing-song quality, making the poet's message memorable, and it is reminiscent of a nursery rhyme. Blake's work often examines the loss of innocence, including sexual innocence and childhood innocence, as the child recognises the cruelty of people to one another. The exploitation and abuse of children are themes Blake often explores in his work. A notable example of this is his poem, The Chimney Sweep. For more information about William Blake and his fascinating work and life, don't forget to check our earlier video on his poem, A Poison Tree. The Garden of Love sits well with Christina Rossetti's poem, Shut Out, which explores similar themes and is worth reading. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. If so, please hit the like button. Also, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and also check out our other videos. Until next time, from Carol and me, write well. <laughs>